Peter, if I may call you that. Um, you may have. Good. How much resistance do you think the Prime Minister is going to feel in the House of Commons? We'll come on to your role in the Lords in a moment, getting this bill through uh, the Commons next week. I don't know. Uh, obviously, uh, I'm no longer there. Uh, from what I talk, there are concerns. It'll depend a bit what the uh, so-called Star Chamber of the European Research Group conclude as to its effectiveness. I think everybody in the Conservative Party wants it to be effective. Uh, and they want to do so with the minimum um, fuss about human rights and international law. Uh, it may be that this bill, as it stands, will achieve it. I very much hope so. It may need further modification. If so, let's hope they achieve that. Uh, do you think... So let's hope that it vaults through the Commons successfully. I would certainly uh, hope it does. It may be improved. Uh, we were talking earlier about the committee stage where different groups of uh, political parties can seek to improve bills. Let's hope it goes through the Commons. Is it going to make it through the House of Lords? And if it does, what sort of time frame do you think you could put on it? Well, the House of Lords is a self-governing house and the government can't actually control the timetable. So that could be a, an issue at the time. Um, I am not sure whether it will get through the House of Lords. The House of Lords is a very hypocritical place, if I'm allowed to use that word. Uh, well, you can use it on Talk TV, of... just not in the chamber. <laughs> we've uh, had a couple of discussions about it. One yesterday, oh. and I pointed out that to the minister, I said, why don't you get advice from the French government about how to present these things? The French Minister of the Interior on the 31st of October announced to the Assembly, National Assembly, that he proposed to ignore rulings of the European Court for Human Rights and send people back to their home countries if he thought they were dangerous. There was almost no outrage at that. On the 14th of November, he actually sent uh, a asylum seeker back to Uzbekistan, despite a ruling of the European Court of Human Rights that uh, he shouldn't do so because the asylum seeker would suffer the risk of torture and death. There was no outrage. It hasn't been reported. You were the first uh, broadcast programme, I think, to have had this on, apart from Parliament Live TV, which obviously nobody watches. Uh, it's extraordinary. The French can get away with this without outrage. And I, you know, I tease the fact we had the head of the Foreign Office saying what a terrible thing we were doing, making no comment about what was happening in France. He didn't even, wasn't aware of it. Our former ambassador to the European Union saying, oh, the French are not really going to do that. They already have, and he didn't know anything about it. Um, so the, the House of Lords gets frightfully upset about what we may do. Mm. and says we will be international pariahs if we do it, and ignores what other countries do, and that's getting my goat. So, so Peter, is this a question of political will, then? I think the Prime Minister's been completely unequivocal. He will do, quote, whatever it takes to get these planes off the ground. If France can do it and have done it, why do we need this bill? Is it a question of political will, or are the Prime Minister's hands tied by a sort of activist civil service who don't want to see this happen, or, or judicial activism, who are seeking to block him? Well, I think we are, and it's a good thing, a more law-abiding country than France. France, the government, appears to be able to do things, uh, disregarding its own courts, disregarding its uh, treaty organisations and so on, without passing an act of parliament in the French Assembly. We rightly, if we want to uh, change the law, have to go through a parliamentary process. And I'm glad we live in a country where that is the case, uh, but I wish uh, our parliamentarians would realise that that is the job they've been given by the British people, to make sure that the laws balance the rights of individuals, asylum seekers, against the rights of uh, the population who are already here and the risks that we want to deter people taking of drowning in the channel. Uh, the court couldn't balance those risks. It deemed it was not allowed to balance risks because the European Court of Human Rights has said it must only take into account the interests of the asylum seekers. Well, well no. Parliament should say, we think a balance should be struck. This is the right balance, uh, and we propose to do it.